Hi everyone, it's Gary here, and if you give me just a second, I'm going to look at my other monitor, monitor here and make sure everything is set. Um, during the course of the presentation, I will be looking over here occasionally. I'm kind of looking at your chats. There's a ton of people on the stream already, as I can see. Bree is also uh, in, on her computer monitoring the chats, and um, <clears throat> we will try to keep up with that as best as we can and, and maybe answer some of your questions along the way. But uh, we don't have that much time, so I'm not sure I'll be able to keep up with that. It's come, coming uh, pretty fast and furiously at the moment. Um, so welcome to this training. We're going to be doing um, a real basic look at uh, getting started editing in Vegas Pro and Vegas Movie Studio. Now I'm in Vegas Pro, uh, as you might be able to see in the, uh, the screen behind my picture here. I'll make that go away in a minute and you can see the screen. Uh, but everything that I talk about here uh, will also pertain to Vegas Movie Studio Platinum. Uh, if I happen to mention something that I, uh, that I realize doesn't work in Platinum, I'll try to mention that. But most everything that I talk about here will um, also be usable in, in Movie Studio Platinum. So whether you're using Vegas Pro or Movie Studio Platinum, you're in the right place if you need to learn uh, some of the very basics of getting started. So let me um, get my face out of the way here so you can see the interface uh, of the software a little bit better. And let's just get started. Now, I've brought Vegas Pro up in its default um, configuration, and this is what you would see when the first time you installed Vegas Pro. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of the windows and all the parts of the interface um, one by one because it, that would just take too long. I'll just talk about some of the things as we uh, move along in the training. What I do want to point out, though, that the interface is very flexible and you can basically set it up however you'd like to set it up, however works best for your workflow. So across the top here, we have what we call the window docking area. And you can see a series of tabs, and these tabs lead to different windows in the docking area, like the effects window and media generators and transitions and the explorer window and so forth. Um, as we work or as you work along in Vegas Pro, You'll use those various windows and you just get to them by, by clicking the tabs. Uh, over on the right here, you have your preview window. This is where you're going to see the result of the work that you're doing. And across the bottom is the main timeline area. That's where you're going to spend 80, 85% of your time working on your project down in here. So that's just a, a brief overview of the interface. Now, the interface, as I said, is very flexible. If I grab one of these tabs and drag it away from the window docking area, I can set it out as a floating window. And in fact, I can do that with any of these windows. And I can put them anywhere on my screen that I want to, or in my case, I have another monitor over here. Now you can't see it because I moved it over to my second monitor and you're only seeing the one. But it's over here, I can set windows up over on that monitor. And so maybe I have all my important windows that I use um, frequently over there. But over here, I have my main timeline and my preview window. Uh, any different way to configure things that you want to do, you can. Now, if you find yourself experimenting and you've dragged windows off and now all of a sudden you feel a little bit lost because you don't know where the windows really belong, you can always get back to the default layout. And it's very easy to do. Just come up to the View menu and choose Window Layouts. And I'm not going to do it right now, but you could choose Default Layout. But notice there are a number of other options in this um, in this uh, context menu. And most of all, I want you to notice these extra slots down here. I can take these slots and I can load them with uh, custom layouts that I've created. So for instance, I've created these, this layout where I pulled some windows off and one of them's on my other monitor and so forth. If I wanted to save that as a custom layout, I can easily do that by saying save layout as I give it a name, I'll just call it test2 because I have a test1 already. And I assign it a slot in the list and I click OK. Now I can go back up to that view menu to the window layouts and I can choose either the layout that I saved earlier or the layout that you just saw me save. Or importantly, if you've made a, a mess of your windows and you were experimenting and now you just want to get back to the default layout, just come up and choose Default Layout. 
and you're right back to the comfort, comfortable uh, place that you were when you first started. Um, I'm quickly realizing that there's no way that I'm going to be able to keep up with those questions and, and comments that are coming in on the chat. So I'm just going to sort of set that aside and Bree will uh, communicate with me through another channel and um, let me know if there's anything that I should address uh, along the way. Okay, so let's get started editing. Um, Vegas Pro and Vegas Movie Studio, the Vegas approach is very intuitive. It's very much click and drag, put things where you want them, move them where you want them, uh, and just get on with, with creating your project. And so let's see how that works. The first thing I'm going to do is add some media to my timeline, to my project. And to do that, I'm going to go to my Explorer window. Now this window works just like uh, Windows Explorer does. And it allows me to navigate to the folder on my hard drives or my network drives where I have um, my media stored. And I've already done that. I've already uh, navigated to a folder here on my hard drive that has some media. I'm just going to take one of these and click it. You can see that it uh, selects that file, gives me some information about that file. And if I'm not sure that that's the file that I really want to add to my project, I can easily preview the project with the play preview button over here. I click that and it begins to preview in my uh, preview window. When I've decided that's the right file, I can click stop. It stops the preview and I can just add this to my project. Now, like I said, everything is, is really click and drag in, in uh, Vegas Pro and Vegas Movie Studio. So I'm just going to click the file, drag it down into my timeline. And you can see in my timeline now that I have a couple of uh, empty boxes that move around as I move my cursor around. These, uh, as you'll see in just a moment when I release the mouse button, uh, indicate the area where I'm going to put my this file that I've dragged into the timeline. And I can, um, I can move it wherever I, I want to move it. Um, Bree has just told me that the uh, sound from my, uh, when I play from my audio is really loud. So what I'm going to do in a moment here is I'll mute that audio in Vegas so you don't have to hear that again. So now I've, I've released the mouse button and Vegas is asking me, do I want to set my project video settings to match the media that I've just added? And this is an important step. In most cases, you probably want to say yes here because what that does is it sets the media, the project properties to match the media that you've put on the timeline and therefore it will uh, process your video more efficiently and give you a better preview frame rate. There will be times where you put media on your timeline that doesn't match your project uh, properties, but for the most part, um, you'll probably want to say yes here because most of you are probably using one or two different types of camera, the same camera every time you shoot, and um, the media that you're using in your timeline will probably uh, be from those same cameras, and you'll probably want to match the project settings to those. So I'm going to say yes here, and you can see that the project settings over here now match the media settings over here okay and uh, as I promised I would mute my uh, master audio so that if I play anything from the timeline you won't be overwhelmed by the the uh, sound of it and so all I did is came up to my master bus audio bus here and click the mute button um, one thing that Vegas is famous for is that the audio tools in Vegas uh, are so powerful it actually uh, started its life as a digital audio workstation, so all that power is still in there. And you see a little piece of that here with the master bus, and um, we won't go into that in this training, but maybe a future training we can talk about some of that, uh, some of those things. Okay, so now I have a uh, something on my timeline, and let's take a look at what we've got here. First, notice that I have two things on my timeline, not just one. So I didn't add just a video. I added the video and Vegas Pro automatically breaks the video out into its video portion, which you see up here on track one, and its audio portion on track two. This makes it real easy to work with just the video or just the audio or both of them together. Now by default, they are grouped. So when I click the video portion, a couple of things happen. Well, a few things happen actually. Notice that the, the cursor, the project cursor, jumps to the point where I click. That's going to be a really important technique for you as you work along because you're going to want to move your cursor to play from a certain spot or whatever and all it takes is a click either on an event 
or somewhere in the timeline and you'll move your cursor along. The next thing that happens that you'll notice when I click on an event, and that's what we call these boxes that are on the timeline, we call them timeline clip events or events for short. When I click an event, not only does it move the cursor to that location where I clicked, but it also selects the event. And if you look closely, you can see a yellow highlight around that event that I clicked. Now you can also see a blue highlight around the event that I didn't click. And that blue highlight indicates that this event, the audio event, is grouped with the video event. And so in a moment, when I start editing the video event, you'll see that the audio event moves along with it. The third thing that I want to point out that happens when you click on an event in the timeline is that the video preview window shows you the exact frame on which you clicked. So if I click off of the, the event on the timeline, well, there's nothing there, so I see a black frame in my video preview window, and that's to be expected. But when I click on an event, it shows me what's on that event uh, at that frame that I clicked at. Okay, so let's start uh, doing a little bit of basic editing so you can see how this works. Remember I said that Vegas uh, works in a very click and drag kind of a way. So if I want to put this video somewhere else, if I wanted it to start somewhere else or be located somewhere else, all I have to do is click it and drag it. Now notice that when I drag the video event, the audio event comes with it. And this is what I was saying earlier when you add a video file to your project, the video and audio pieces are grouped together so that they always stay in sync. They, you won't lose synchronization by moving one and forgetting to move the other. Now that's the default behavior. You can, um, you can change that default behavior. You can ungroup those. And to do that, uh, one way to do that, I'll, I can right click on the event and notice that I have all kinds of options here. And this is partially why I wanted to right click here is to show you that just about everything in Vegas is right clickable. Right click it and you'll get a whole context menu of important things that you can use um, as you're editing. But one of the things that the thing that I want to show you here is the group uh, option. So when I choose group, I get a cascading menu that says I can remove this event from the group, I can clear the group, I can select everything in the group, um, cut, copy, and delete everything in the group. So while everything comes in grouped by default, uh, you can change it. Okay, so I move my, uh, my events to wherever I want to move them just by clicking and dragging them. Now what if I want to move to a very specific location? So let's say in this video, um, I want this clip to actually start at exactly five seconds. Well, I can click it and drag it, and I can look at the time ruler across the top here to try to find five seconds. And there I can see five seconds right there. But what if I wanted, you know, five seconds, five frames? Well, I can't really see that here. Um, and so there are a couple of different ways that we can go about finding an exact spot. One way is to click near the spot that you want to find. Now you can see in the display here, I didn't hit five frames exactly. I hit four, uh, uh, five seconds exactly. I hit four seconds, 28 frames. So one thing you can do is to zoom in to your project. And there are a number of different ways to zoom in. The way I use almost exclusively is to roll my mouse wheel away from me. So of course you can't see me doing that, but you can see the result of me doing that. I'm zooming in further and further, and now I can see every individual frame on my ruler. And so if I wanted to hit five seconds exactly, I can see here, I can see five frames, zero seconds, or five seconds, zero frames, and all I have to do is click at that point. Now, one of the nice things about Vegas Pro is it's not going to, uh, Vegas Pro and Vegas Movie Studio, they're not going to let you make a mistake by editing in between frames. So if I try to click in between frames, notice that it, the cursor didn't go to my click point, it quantized to the nearest frame, so that I'm always editing on a video frame. Now, when you're editing audio, there are many times when you want to edit on a finer scale than, than, uh, than um, video frames. In fact, you can edit to the sample level when you're working with audio. But for video and for now, we're just going to leave it as this, where we uh, click and it'll go to the nearest frame. 
Uh, just rest, rest assured that if you needed to go somewhere in between frames, you can do that um, with a, a technique that we're not going to talk about now, but it is possible. So now I'm zooming back out of the timeline using my mouse wheel to scroll, uh, scrolling my mouse wheel toward me to zoom out. Um, so you can see the whole project again. Uh, I'm going to click to move my cursor from five seconds and show you another way and probably a faster way to get to exactly five seconds. Notice there, there are three, um, three boxes down here, uh, three little fields. The first of those fields is the current cursor position. You can double click that to select the current value and then just type 5.0, which is five seconds, zero frames, and press enter. And notice that now my cursor has jumped exactly to five frames. You can see here on the time display, it's, exa it's exactly five frames. If I go back down to that field and hover over it, you can see that the tooltip pops up that sh says that's called the cursor position and it shows a control plus G tooltip. So if I move my cursor again and type control plus G, or control G, you can see that it's highlighted that little field. I can type 5.0, press enter, and my timeline cursor goes directly to five frames, uh, five seconds, zero frames. Now let's say this is an important part of my project. This is an important location in my project and I don't want to do anything with it right now, but I want to remember it for, uh, for the future in my project. I can drop a marker there to remember it. So if I go up under insert and choose marker, notice the keyboard shortcut is simply M. It drops a marker there and I can just type in a name for that marker. I'll call it video start, press enter and now my marker is in place. So now no matter where I put my cursor, no matter how I click around and no matter what else I do, I've always got that marker in place to remind me of where the important uh, point in my project is. Now, not only does the marker mark a place and not only does the cursor show you where you currently are in your project, but they act as very important tools. They act as snap objects. And what I mean by that is, as I start moving my uh, events towards the cursor, notice that when I get close enough, the cursor lights up and my event kind of jumps to the cursor. My event is snapping to the cursor and that yellow highlight that you see showing up on the cursor indicates that I'm snapping to it. And this enables me to say, you know what, I want, to, I want to edit at a very specific point. So let's say I wanted this video to start right here. All I have to do is drag my, cursor, my uh, event to it, and when I get there, it snaps to it, and I know that my event starts exactly where that cursor sits. Same goes if I place my cursor to the right and move to the right. It snaps to the right of my event, and so I can... Um, place that event very, very precisely. So let's keep moving towards the cursor. It snaps to the cursor as we just saw. I move past that. It snaps to the end of the event, snaps to the cursor as we just saw. And if I keep moving towards my marker, you'll see that it snaps to the marker as well. Notice the marker lights up now, showing that I'm snapping to the marker. So the reason we place that marker is because we want an edit at exactly five seconds. If I snap this event to that point, I know it's starting at exactly five seconds. So these, uh, these tools for snapping are extremely important and very helpful. Now here's a little tip for you. If you're trying to make an edit and you're near a snap object, but you don't actually want to snap to that object, you want your edit to be close to that place, but not to that place, hold on your shift key and that overrides the snapping. And so now I can place that very precisely and it won't snap to the uh, cursor. If I zoom in here, you can see that I did, got very close, but it didn't snap to the cursor. And so just remember, hold your shift key down to override snapping. Let's put this back to the marker. Okay, let's talk about play, uh, playing the project a little bit and see how that works. You'll notice that uh, underneath the preview window, you have a few buttons here. Play pause, stop, and then a hamburger button that if I click on that leads to a whole bunch of other buttons that we can access through the hamburger menu. 
For now, I just want to play the project. So I'm going to click the play button and notice what happens. The project starts playing from wherever my cursor was sitting. Now, my cursor was sitting after my event, so we don't see anything in the video preview window. So obviously, that's not what we want to do. But even while the product, uh, project is playing, I can click anywhere uh, in the, in the, uh, uh, above, the time, uh, above the time ruler here, and the cursor will jump to that spot and start playing from there. So if I want to see what it looks like, what my video looks like, I'll click in the time ruler before that, and it starts playing. And you don't hear the audio because remember I muted that earlier, but you can see the video playing. Now, if I want to stop my playback, I can hit the stop button on my preview and watch what happens to the cursor when I stop playback. When I stop playback, the cursor jumps back to where it was when I started playback or when I, when I uh, repositioned my start time. This is an important distinction to make because sometimes when you're playing, when you're previewing your project, I'm going to click that marker to bring my cursor directly to it. Sometimes when you're playing your project, you want to stop the project and you want the cursor to jump back to the beginning where you were. So you click the stop button and the cursor goes back to the beginning. But there are other times where you're, maybe you're looking for an edit point and you, want, you would like the cursor to stop right where you want it to stop, right where it is when you decide it, you want it to stop. In that case, you don't click the stop button, you click the pause button. So let's see how that works. I click start, starts the playback, and when the cursor gets to be about two-thirds th uh, of the way through, I'll click pause. And now the cursor stops where it was when I clicked pause. And so that's the distinction between play and pause, and it's a really uh, important and useful distinction to make. Okay, so that's a little bit about playback. Um, let me start the project uh, playing back from in front of the event again, and notice that when it reaches where the event is, the event just suddenly jumps in. And if we go far enough, it'll suddenly jump out at the end. And sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of a, a transition into it. Instead of just starting and stopping, you want to fade something in and out. Let me show you how we can do that. I'm going to, first of all, just make the video track a little bit taller. Notice I'm just dragging the bottom of the video track header down to make the video track a little taller so you can see this a little bit better. And I'll place my cursor at that marker. I can either click on the marker like I did before, or notice the marker has a number, number one. If I type number one on the uh, numbers across the top of my keyboard, then the cursor jumps directly to that marker. That's a very handy shortcut as well. And I'll zoom in a little bit so that you can see the beginning of this a little bit better. Now, if I want something other than it to just start, I want it to fade in a little bit, then um, I would just point to, there's a little handle at the very top corner of the event, and I can point to that and just drag it out, and this creates a fade. It's that easy to create a fade in on my video. Now, when I play this, watch uh, as my video fades in, and I can do the same on the fade out. I can just create a fade out. It's just a matter of pointing to the corner and dragging it out, dragging it as long as you want to make it, and now the video fades out nicely. If the video is lasting too long, I can trim it. I can point to the edge. You see the cursor change a little bit, and I'll just drag it in, click and drag. That's all we do. And now I've made that event much shorter. It fades in, it plays for a little time, and then it fades right back out. Okay. Um, now let's add another uh, event, another piece of media to the product, uh, project just to, to show you how, it would, how we build a project. So again, I could come up here and preview this, but let's say this, I've already done that. I know this is the file I want. I can drag it down to the timeline and put it wherever I want to put it. Now if I move, you can see my, my empty boxes showing where I'm going to uh, where I'm about to drop this, if I move it close enough to the existing event, notice it snaps. So the edge of events is another snap object. So if I want to make sure I'm lining these up exactly so there's no space between them, I can snap them together, release my mouse, and now I have my second piece of media in the timeline. Let's take this fade out that I put 
on the first one off so that now it doesn't fade out. Now when I play the project, I'm just pressing the space bar on my keyboard to act as play and stop. So I didn't mention that when I was talking about these buttons, but the keyboard shortcut for the play button is the space bar and the keyboard shortcut for the stop button is also the space bar. So I press space bar, it starts playing, it fades in. When it gets to this point, it'll just jump from one to the other and now we have a new, uh, a new piece of video. I picked a bad video, so I just selected it and deleted it. I wanna pick one that looks a lot different so you can see um, the difference when it changes, so I'll bring this one down. So just to go over that again, I just selected it and pressed delete on my keyboard to delete the one I didn't want. Now if I play my project, it fades in, it jumps to the second one. Maybe I want to trim this down and create a fade. And notice I can do that even while the project is playing. I can do my fades. I can create uh, trims. I can make it shorter, make it longer while the, pro uh, while the project is playing. And it's just like that. It's uh, easy, so easy to, um, to uh, edit. Okay, so right now we have a jump between the first one and the second one. Maybe we want some sort of a transition. Creating transition in, in Vegas is incredibly easy. All we need to do is to drag the first one over the second one and we have a crossfade. So now the first one will fade out as the second one fades in. So when I play it, first one fades in, then they crossfade, and then the next one fades out. Okay, so uh, I'm a little shocked at how fast a half hour flew by. We've only got four or three and a half minutes left in the presentation. Um, but hopefully that gave you some very basic, now I can get started in Vegas Pro and Vegas Movie Studio techniques. Um, we will talk about, uh, in the future, about potentially making these trainings a little bit longer because this flew by really quickly. Um, but we do have one of these trainings, uh, live trainings, um, scheduled for each Tuesday at the same time, uh, noon my time, which is UTC minus five, um, for the rest of April. So the next three weeks, we'll have three more um, live tutorials. And next week, uh, at this point, I think what I'm going to talk about is adding effects to your project and four different places where you can add those effects to achieve different results and um, why you might want to do those in those different places. Uh, there's no way I could keep up with your chats. Uh, they're just coming in like crazy. Um, and so I'm not going to be able to, to uh, monitor that. I can see that uh, at this point. So in these live trainings, we'll have Bree monitoring those and um, passing your questions along uh, at, at some point if um, we can figure out the system a little bit better. But for a first time out, I'm hoping this worked well for you guys. Felt good on my end. Um, I know I didn't get too far along, but if you're very, you know, if you're totally brand new to Vegas Pro or Vegas Movie Studio, then hopefully you've learned a few easy techniques to get started, get up and running quickly, and to start putting your project together. All you need to do is what I've shown you here and just continue to add clips to your uh, timeline and move the events, trim them out, order them the way you want to, to have them uh, in your project, and you've got a project. Now in the last minute or so, um, it probably wouldn't be fair of me to leave you without showing you how you can actually deliver this project. So. Once you're done with your project, let's say we've done everything we want to do here and uh, we're ready to now deliver it, go up under File, choose Render As, and then that would uh, bring up a dialog box that enables us to, uh, say, to pick a file format, pick a template, pick a location, uh, and so forth. Um, if you pick something like the Magix AVC AAC MP4, that's a very common uh, format for if you're delivering to YouTube or Facebook or wherever you, you're, you're um, delivering online, uh, you'll, you'll probably want to use that file format. And you'll notice that we have um, GPU accelerated uh, templates over here to make your rendering even faster. So I would choose my location, I would give my file a name and so forth, and then I would simply click render as. For now, I'm just gonna click cancel. 
and it would make a file that I can share online or with my family or whatever I want to do. Okay, so I know this was a very basic look. Um, I, I know just by recognizing some of the names that I see on the chats that uh, many of you are far beyond this in your uh, Vegas journey. And, and um, maybe you didn't learn too much here, but maybe you picked up a tip or two uh, based on what I was talking about. But those of you who've never seen it before or are just brand new to it, hopefully this gives you a good starting point. And um, next week's, video, next week's uh, training will be, again, on the basic side, but the, the two trainings that I have uh, planned for the last two weeks of April will be a little bit more on the advanced side. So hopefully there'll be something there for all, all of you, uh, even advanced users. So, okay, so for now, um, I think that's it for me. Uh, we were at the, the half hour here. So I really appreciate everybody um, joining us. I'm kind of blown away by the number of chats that just keep coming in. And I really appreciate the engagement and the support that we're getting uh, from all of you. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so that you get notified anytime uh, we post a new video or uh, anytime we go live. Um, I went live last week unexpectedly and we had a handful of people that, that caught on to that because they got notified. So. If you want to keep up with what we're doing uh, with live trainings or other live sessions that we're uh, planning to do with um, on, here on YouTube, uh, then please just subscribe to the channel and hit the uh, notification bell. Um, and let us know um, what you'd like to see uh, as far as training goes. Uh, I hope to be able to, to continue doing more and more of these, uh, especially now when we're in this situation where we're all isolated. This feels like a way that I can come to you personally um, and we can have a little bit more of uh, personal engagement and um, you know just feel a little bit more connected. Uh, so that's it. Uh, thanks for joining us. Stay well everybody. Uh, I'm going to look over at my machine. I'm going to end the stream. Um, I'm actually going to wait for about 15 seconds or so before I end the stream so you'll just see me sitting here uh, so that it has time for everything to buffer through and reach you. So I do appreciate you being here, and until next week, we'll see you later. So long.